What's up YouTube, Siegfried Trulane here, and today we're going to be talking about why Dr. Ratio was truly free. So I'll catch you guys in just a minute. What's up YouTube, Siegfried Tulane here, and today we are talking about why Dr. Ratio was free. The reason I wanted to bring this up is because there seems to be a lot of confusion on to why he might have been free. Um, I, I see a lot of connection to Genshin and the whole Ayaka being free mishap that happened due to a bunch of fan play, like players posting misinformation. Now, real quick, let's jump back to that whole Ayaka incident. That was not, home, that was not Genshin's fault. 100% not Genshin's fault. Okay, I'm not going to blame them for something that isn't their fault. As it wasn't their fault, it was fans' fault. It was people spreading this information and people eating it up. This is a common issue in every game. I just want to be clear. I remember in Final Fantasy XIV when a character was being released and everyone was like, oh, it can't be a ninja. It's going to be this. It's going to be that. And, you know, a bunch of misinformation got around. And that's caused... I'm going to be honest. That causes drama for every game that comes around. So... You know, when you take a look at the whole Ayaka being free incident back in Genshin, it was not Genshin's fault, and I fully support Genshin going after leakers and people trying to get information from their game before they want it released, because that really did create a bad PR situation that Genshin never recovered from. And that may or may not have a direct result on why Genshin rewards are so bad, let's be honest. That probably really upset them to the point where they were just like, fine. And they didn't decide to give anything away. Um, it also has most likely tied to the fact that the Genshin director for the first three years was the same director of HA3 in the beginning. HA3 in the beginning was not nearly as good. If you talk to anybody who played HA3 in the beginning, uh, which is Honkai Impact 3rd, versus Honkai Impact 3rd now. Honkai Impact 3rd now is so much more of an easier gameplay smooth for getting dailies done. Events done, rewards, everything. Um, the game rewards double the amount of currency than Genshin does. But when you calculate the cost, right now it breaks even. Except for weapon batters. Um, but coming in the new update, there's supposed to be a huge major update change to the gacha system, which would actually reduce the total amount of summons you need to finish a character being 30. Which is about... Or 3 multis. Uh, sorry, 30 multis which would be the equivalent of 60 multis in Genshin. Um, now if we take that for account with Genshin, real quick with a calculator here. Um, and if we take a look at that, let's see, with Genshin, let's see, you got... eight multi, You have 16 multis for the character banner, and 21, right? So 20, 8, 16 plus 21. About 37 multis are required in Genshin to ensure you get your character. Okay, Times that by 1600. That's about 60,000 gems. In Honkai Star Rail, I mean Honkai Impact 3rd, it's going to be around 84,000 gems. We earn about double in uh, Genshin. We earn, I mean, Honkai Impact 3rd, we earn about double the gems than you do in Genshin, right? So you got to calculate that in as well. So you're looking at... Sorry, I missed my, I missed my number again. So you're looking about get uh, Honkai Impact Thirds costs about seventy percent more to fully get your care. Oh no, sorry. I think Genshin's costs about seventy percent more. Oh no, third set. Sorry, Honkai Impact Thirds costs about thirty percent more. I'm doing my math wrong. Honkai Impact Thirds costs about thirty percent more to fully max out a character, full gear, and the character. But they get about fifty percent of the gems, which means you got about a twenty percent when calculating the weapons banner. A twenty percent advantage in Honkai Back 3rd, as of now. With the current update coming out though, this 30 multis is gonna cut in half to about 15. So then you're gonna be looking at, it's gonna actually only cost you about 42,000 to finish off a character versus the 
59,000. So now, you know, we're looking at Honkai Impact 3rd is going to be about, you know, less, cost less to finish a character off, and you're going to still get double the gems. So, I mean, these are important things to take a look at, okay? But the reason I'm bringing this up is because there has to be an understanding of how good Honkai Impact 3rd has been to understand Honkai Star Rail. Because Honkai Impact 3rd and Honkai Star Rail have the same top leader doing both games. This is why stories in both games are more similar. This is why people are probably gonna more people are gonna die in Honkai Star Rail. Ting Young die Ting Young is most likely dead. Okay, do not expect Ting Young to come back. She is most likely dead. Um, because Honkai Impact 3rd games are not about are not afraid to kill characters, and you have to remember this is a Honkai game, not a Genshin game. Um, so let's talk about why Dr. Ratio is free, okay? Understanding what we know about Honkai Back 3rd and its generosity. Oh yeah, one more, and we'll get into that in a bit, actually. Um, Ruan Mei and Dr. Ratio are going to be running on the same banner, alright? Dr. Ratio is by far, obviously, the weaker of the two units. Support units are always going to be a top tier unit versus DPS. DPS get power crept way too easily in gacha games. Support units stay longer. Look at, again, Honkai Impact 3rd for this. If you look at Honkai Impact 3rd, you will see that characters that were support had a longer time than DPS characters. Uh, Fischl, who was a lightning support in Honkai Impact 3rd, lasted a lot, lasted pretty much until they dropped Eden. And if you didn't pull Eden, Fischl is still a good support. Azure Emperor was a very good support for like three years until they dropped Hersher of Truth, who would replace her. Azure Emperor had a three year lifespan of being the top tier support and is still a good support if you have to use a different elemental support, which there are times you need to in Honkai Impact 3rd, so she still has life. Uh, DPS characters, not so much in Honkai Impact 3rd. They do get power crept. Um, Eventually, Flame Sign will be power crept by a better fi psychic fire character. But right now, she's the best psychic fire character out there. Vermilion Knight got power crept when Siren came out. So we gotta first go over that, right? Next, you have to understand that because Dr. Ratio is a DPS and Ruan Mei is a support, and the very first ever S rank limited support, Ruan Mei is gonna sell way better. So what's going to happen when Ruan Mei comes out? Everybody's going to summon on Ruan Mei. That banner is going to have the most summons and make the most money. When Dr. Ratio comes out, only hardcore whales and content creators are going to summon on him. And they're going to summon on him regardless because they're probably going to want to E6 him. This means that Dr. Ratio's banner would probably be the worst performing banner in the game's history for the first year. Maybe longer. Because more people are going to want to get the support unit than a, another DPS unit. Especially a hunt DPS unit. We got, you, got Do, you got Don Hang. If you have Don Hang, you don't need ratio. Jing Lue, you're probably using Jing Lue over that. There's a lot of other DPS characters we already have that makes Dr. Ratio insignificant to summon for. So, realistically, by giving away Dr. Ratio for free, they did many many things. First of all, let's talk about the first one, right? Number one. Dr. Ratio's banner now has a legit excuse to be the worst performing banner in Honkai Star Wars history. Because now they can say, well, yeah, we gave the unit away for free. Why? So, of course, people aren't going to summon for copies. We gave them for free. This is going to remove, this is going to do two things. It's going to remove the negative PR of having a unit that just sold horribly as being already characterized as a bad unit because in comparison to, you know, Ruan Mei, he's a bad unit, when you compare him to the other banner being featured right now. And it gets a positive because it shows that, hey, you know, you guys supported us. We got three rewards. We're going to give you a limited, powerful s rank character. That's number one. PR. Great. Number two. It gives them, it gives the community a reward in for its support in the cheapest way possible while looking good. I mean, imagine if they gave us Ruan Mei for free. That would have been way more broken, and they would have lost a lot of money on that. Because Ruan Mei, again, is going to sell way higher 
than Dr. Ratio. So if Ruan Mei would have come out, people would have been like, sweet, I got Ruan Mei, I'm skipping Dr. Ratio, we're going to go for Black Swan. Or we're going to go for Acheron. We're going to go for Sunday. We're going to go for the new 2.0 units. They would have still skipped Dr. Ratio. So giving away Ruan Mei would not have incentivized, incentivized many low spenders or free to play to summon for Dr. Ratio. They would have skipped him for what's coming next. So giving away Ruan Mei would have actually cost them a lot more money. So Dr. Ratio was the ideal unit to give away. Throwing Shu Yi on the Ruan Mei banner was also great PR and encouraged, you know, and was a very good move and is going to really give them more money in the end. <laughs> Number three, it actually incentivizes people to spend more money now. Think about it. You feel respected by the company. You're like, okay, you know what? This, these devs respect me. I am 100% for financially supporting them, even if it's the battle pass or the $6 a month for the monthly pack. People are going to feel incentivized to support this company now, meaning they're going to make actually more money from low spenders and people who are free to play except for maybe getting that monthly pass now. They might be free to play and be, you know what? I'm going to get that monthly pass. It's worth it to me now. So this is important because it gets people to open up their walls and start spending a game, especially when you look at how many came from the Genshin community who are going to be a little more conscientious on when they want to spend money or not after what Genshin has done to them. Because you have to realize people spend a lot of money on Genshin and Genshin has continually screwed over with rewards. This is going to get those people to want to crack open their wallets now and even spend just five bucks a month. 10 bucks every two months. That's a huge deal. It really is. I mean, think about how, like, think if every Genshin player was actually buying that monthly pass, how much more money Genshin would actually make. They would make a lot of it. They would make enough to cover a free five star easily. Um, and number four, it gets people excited for a non hype character. And now people have Dr. Ratio. They're like, dude, this guy's actually really good. I want to get his light cone. So now low spenders and maybe free to play players may be like, you know what? I'm going to go for the light cone. Because again, the light cone banner is a 75% chance to get it. And the pity is still the same as Genshin's, which means you're not having a higher pity. And so this does incentivize people to go for his light cone, or at least more people. Again, whales were already going to E6 him, R5 his, his weapon, and light, him and his weapon, right? They were going to do it already. I was not going to go for his light cone. Guess what? I went for his light cone. I had him for free. Why not? And then I realized how good he was, and I'm like, you know what? I want to give him to E2 because E2 is really good. I come to E2. And I would have actually completely skipped his banner and his light cone. Now, I spend money on the game. But I would have skipped it. And I'm like, dude, no way. He's great. I like him. And I summoned for him. By giving him away for free, it incentivized players who spent the money as well, who would have skipped him, to spend on him now. Think about that. Absolutely genius. That is a genius move. So in short, by giving away Dr. Ratio, Wales will still spend to E6 him R5 his weapon, or like him. And this means that they're actually giving away... This means that they're actually making more money away by giving away a character on a bad performing banner. All the while looking generous, like the most generous devs of all time. It is such a genius move and I really respect it because I, that is how you control a gotcha game to make sure you're making maximum profit while still having great PR. Then making Dr. Ratio good as well because they made him a really good unit. Again, incentivizes players to spend on him to get his light cone and makes free to play players want to spend more money because they feel respected. That's important. People don't mind financially investing in a game a little bit if they feel respected. They don't want to do it if they feel like the game's going to die soon or the devs don't give a crap about the community, they, but they will do it if the game looks like it's going to be a long lasting game and the devs care. And I think the biggest thing, right? I mean, this is something people are going to know, right? When you take a look at Honkai Impact 3rd's reward systems for their, like, like it is common in Honkai Impact 3rd to give away free 5 stars. We do it all the time. Like, there's almost always a free 5 star, just random free 5 star throughout the year, via an event. 
There is a free five star brought to a shop that is only in game currency, not currency you buy, which you earn by doing events or what you earn by doing weeklies. And it's a free S rank, and it is still usually a pretty good unit. And then there's always a brand new free S rank given during anniversaries. Yearly, we probably get between five to 10 free S ranks every year. A lot of those being S rank selectors and free. But then you also have spending incentives, which give even more away, which is probably about another um, maybe four or five. The only thing I think that Honkai Star Wheel can do better is what Genshin, is what Honkai Impact Third does, and that is to put S rank units in the battle pass. In Honkai Impact Third, if you get a battle pass, you can actually get one S rank over that four seasons of a battle pass of two different S ranks you want. You do have to buy the advanced pass once to be able to do it, but once you've done that, you can usually get any of those two S ranks you want, or if you have them, their weapons and their sticks. So I really hope to see Honkai Impact Thirds battle pass do this in the future maybe changing that four star light cone selector um, maybe at level 70 adding in a five star light cone selector that would be great for the game or having like even like having the five star light cone selector be the base reward and a five star character selector as the main as a paid reward like think about that. that even if it's the base standard banner it's still worth it in the end and it will just improve their pr amongst players so, I don't expect Honkai Star Wars Anniversary to be better than Honkai Impact Thirds. I expect it to be less as good, but I will be surprised if it's worse or as bad as Genshin's. I expect Honkai, Standard, uh, Honkai, Honkai Star Rail to be in the middle of the two. I don't expect three S ranks to be given to us. And, you know, like 40,000 crystals that we usually get in like Honkai Impact Third. We get a lot in Honkai Impact Third. We get a lot. But I do expect probably about, I would assume, okay, a free S rank selector from the standard banner. And, and or, and or, nine free multis, just by logging in. Not at one time, probably you log in, you get tickets every time you log in, and nine free multis on the standard banner. This would ensure characters who probably have not hit that 300 mark yet to hit that 300 mark, and they'd actually get two to three S ranks. On the anniversary and that would be great for them especially since they get to select one or two of them so i do that's what i expect for the first anniversary and i expect standard banners to be improved over time and so that every anniversary if you get that standard banner selector you have more options every year um, honkai star rail devs do seem to care a lot more about the game and again that is based off i think the lead developer I don't think Honkai Star Rail's situation has anything to do with Genshin. With that said, guys, we're going to call it here. Seek Future Lane. I'll catch you guys in the future.